Behind me, buried under this mass of rubble and boulders, is a town lost to time and smashed underneath a fallen mountain. This is Frank Slide in Alberta, Canada. Join us as we explore the Frank Slide Interpretive Center, hike about the ruins, and learn what happened the night Turtle Mountain fell. Frank Slide is located in southern Alberta in an area known as the Crow's Nest Pass and is part of the Rocky Mountain chain. Even without knowing the history of the area, visitors will know right away that something big happened here simply by driving along the highway. April 29th, 1903, at 4.10 a.m., the citizens of the town of Frank were awoken by a terrifying rumble, louder than any train they'd heard, as the side of Turtle Mountain, pictured behind me, came crashing down upon them. More than 82 million tons of rock fell from Turtle Mountain and buried part of the town of Frank. 600 people were living in Frank, but the main part of town was outside the path of the rock avalanche. The slide plowed through the river, picked up a wall of mud, and racing north, added it to the mass of rock that ground its way towards the approximately 100 people who lived on the edge of town. Most of them died. This was the most devastating rock slide in all of Canadian history. To teach others about this tragedy, an interpretive center and hiking trail have been established at the edge of the avalanche zone. We decided to spend the morning there and give our kids an opportunity to learn about the powerful force of nature. I recommend you start your time at the center in the theater to watch a short video that briefs you on the Frank slide. It was really well done and made the rest of the center's displays make a little more sense. There are four levels to the Frank Slide Interpretive Center. The first level starts on the day of the rock slide. The second level talks about in the direct aftermath and the wake of the rock slide. The third level talks about why Turtle Mountain was so sketchy and why it did fail in the end. And the fourth level talks about some of the more recent history in the area, such as the Hillcrest Mine Explosion and the discovery of a really cool Tyrannosaurus Rex skull. One of the most powerful displays, in my opinion, showed a blown out building filled with rocks and strewn with real artifacts from the people of Frank, the belongings of the real victims. This is what's left of a bed frame. The second level of the Interpretive Center also contained a memorial stone with the names of those who passed away in the slide, although to this day, many people still remain unidentified. There are many fascinating stories, both tragic and triumphant, that stem from the Frank Slide avalanche. For example, one girl decided to sleep over at the hotel where she worked instead of going home after her late shift. Her home was crushed and her entire family lost. She would have been too if not for that fateful decision. One of the most enduring myths of the Frank slide was that the entire town was buried except for one baby girl. Since supposedly no one in Frank lived to identify her, she was nicknamed Frankie Slide. Of course, this is an untrue story. However, the youngest child of the Leach family, Marion, was only 16 months old at the time of the slide and one of several little girls who inherited the nickname. A group of 17 miners were actually trapped inside the coal mine at the time of the Frank slide. They originally started to dig their way out of the entrance, but because there was so much rock, they couldn't get through. One of the miners had the brilliant idea to dig sideways through the coal seam and come out the side of the mountain, which is what they did. 
They emerged from the coal mine at 5 p.m. the next day after Turtle Mountain had collapsed. But hands down, my absolute favorite story is that of Charlie the horse. 31 days, 31 days after the slide, miners re-entered the mine to assess the damage. The miners started hearing rattling chains, very spooky, ghosty noises, and soon discovered poor Big Charlie trapped in a caved-in tunnel. He had survived by lying sideways on the ground and licking water that trickled past and nibbling on wood from the coal cart he'd been hauling. The horse survived for 31 days inside Turtle Mountain, then died after being rescued because of the wood in his stomach. It's a sad story, but I have so much respect for that horse. It was also interesting to learn about the geology of the area as it pertained to the slide. According to the video that we just watched, the First Nations people refused to sleep under Turtle Mountain. They called it the mountain that moves and it made them very uneasy. Legends had been passed down for generations about how dangerous Turtle Mountain could be. Sadly, the people of Frank had not heard these legends. So you're gonna make it crack? So, it's one of the most sensitive modern instruments ever used on Turtle Mountain. Use your muscles to move the animals together or apart at the same time. Watch the electronic display, see the number of changes. So, here, are you a lot on the bullets before ready? Oh, look it. You're going to crack that mountain. Yeah. Oh my god, am I? Or is it pretend? It's pretend. This is actually on the mountain. And they measure how much tilt it has. So when you did this, you were, you were changing the tilt. Go again. Try and get a bigger one. As much as we love the air conditioning inside the Frank Slide Interpretive Center, because it's 33 degrees outside again today, we are headed down the trail towards the parking lot. But if we go to our right, we will be on the Frank Slide Outdoor Trail, which is a 1.1 kilometer hike. And she said only the last five minutes are uphill, so we're willing to do it even in this heat. Seeing the aftermath of Frank Slide from above on the Interpretive Center balcony is one thing but actually walking through the devastation is a completely different experience. Just standing in the middle of this rock field really, really drives home how massive the destruction was when Turtle Mountain fell. Honestly, the sheer amount of work that would have gone into creating this trail and cutting things through the rock like that, that also boggles my mind. Eventually, the trail cut back into the woods and thankfully, the shade. The last bit of this interpretive trail is pretty cool. You go through the trees, they have these tree root steps through the forest. My kids are finding it kind of magical.
If you find yourself in southern Alberta near the Crow's Nest Pass, make sure you take the time to stop by Frank Slide. It's an important reminder of the power of nature and will most definitely leave you in awe. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, share it out, and of course, if you haven't yet, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you as a part of my YouTube community. Thanks for watching, everyone.